on a lonely planet slowly spinning its way to damnation, amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser space programs, one team stands resilient against the herds, putting their lives on the line to aid those who were previously unaware of the quick save option. Yes, it's the incredible adventures of Jebediah and his crack team of Kerbinauts. They are the Blunderbirds. Saving the Kerbin race, one stranded explorer at a time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of the Blunderbirds in which we will be returning to the Red Planet once again. I think I did this in episode uh, 7 or 6? I don't know, but I've done a Juno rescue before and we're going to be rescuing a Reddit user Nautilus XCVI, I think is what his name is, I don't remember now. Um, who has unfortunately left his Kerbal stranded here with uh, not enough fuel to return to orbit. So. We've got to do something, right? And the reason I'm revisiting Juna is because a Juna is kind of one of those places a lot of people struggle with because it's the first. Generally, it's often the first planet people go to uh, on their first interplanetary mission, and also because the last time I did Juna, I kind of used an SSTO, which is good from a sort of spectacle point of view. It's quite an impressive mission plan, uh, but it's not so great for those who actually need some help rescuing their crew from uh, the red planet. Enter this rocket here, um, which as you can see from those landing legs is a Falcon uh, 9 inspired uh, setup. We're going to be recover- the booster is recoverable, we'll get into that later, but they're obviously for new players you don't- you're not obligated to recover the booster, it's just- it's just there to kind of add a little bit of extra, I don't know, flair to the video. But for those of you kind of wanting to watch this from a tutorial, hopefully by this point you've at least mastered getting into orbit, if not, I wouldn't perhaps attempt to tune her at this stage, I'd probably just, you know, practice getting to Minmus maybe, then Mun, and gradually build yourself up that way. Um, but, you know, we're just doing this gentle gravity turn. Don't want to do kind of too many violent uh, jerks with the rocket's orientation, because obviously we need to maintain aerodynamic stability. And then once we're suitably high up in the atmosphere where air resistance is no longer a factor, we can deploy the fairings just there, and then we can stage again and um, jettison the launch escape system. There we go. Obviously, I had that. You can set that up to an action group as well, so usually I use the abort action group, which would then pull the, uh, the capsule free, but... If, you, if it ends up not needing to do that, you can just add it as a stage, like that. And there we are. This player actually has a lot of things in orbit, so I have to quickly turn those off from the map view. We can do a quick puff to circularize, because as you can tell, this is an SSTO booster. It is possible to do Falcon 9 um, without having to make it an SSTO, but it's just very difficult to do. Um, <laughs> and it's not really that feasible. It, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just have the patience to do it, really. But there we are. And as you can see, this is an Apollo style, because people seem to like my Apollo style missions. I mean... I think we've only got a limited number of times left before it's going to become quite tired and we'll have to start varying it up again. So maybe I'll just, I'll cease doing Apollo style from now on, unless we did a, a moon mission or something and, you know, just wanted to be faithfully recreating it. I don't know. Man is the other... Oh, yeah. The, by the way, on screen, this is me recovering the booster. The air brakes ended up exploding. And unfortunately, what I realized is those landing legs can't actually take the, waist, the weight of this thing. It's too heavy for the landing legs. So I did hit it quite violently on this occasion, but I tried several times to get it to land and it just turns out those landing legs just can't, they can't take the weight sadly. So um, work is needed, <laughs> probably you need to add some more landing legs or just build your own from the structural parts and things. So that was a shame, but hey, the engine bay survived, which is kind of would be the most expensive part probably, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and from a career point of view, if you can save the engines, that will save you a nice chunk of cash anyway, so it's not a complete loss. And then we can start doing our escape burn from Kerbin. If we wanted to be really efficient, um, we could do several burns at Periapsis to maximise our use of the Oberth effect, thereby, you know, saving fuel. But this thing has, you know, a lot of fuel in it for what it needs to do. We, we have, I think I ended up, I ended the mission with like a thousand metres per second of Delta V remaining, and that was through very inefficient flying as well. Like, hey, as you can see, we only did one burn at Kerbin Periapsis, and on the way back, we rather than wait for a suitable transfer window, I just kind of forced a transfer window by doing um, some rather expensive uh, burns. So, you know. And again, like I say, we did the SSTO mission. This is the uh, easy mode version that's more sort of replicatable by less experienced players. So, you know, now we've got both <laughs> we've got both ends of the spectrum covered. And then we obviously just time up to a maneuver to correct our uh, kept our encounter, so we're actually going to be passing over the crashed lander. That's why we're not actually going for an equatorial orbit because we want our orbit line to. Well, we want to have. We want there to be points in our orbit in which the lander we need to rescue passes below us, which wouldn't, which wouldn't occur on an equatorial orbit. 
Uh, it's very important that you make sure that your direction, your orbital direction is the same direction as Juno's rotation, if that makes sense. So we wouldn't be, I made sure I was passing on the spe this specific side because if I, if I entered Juno and circularized on the other side of the planet, um, we'd end up be orbiting orbiting it in the opposite direction to its rotation, which is not a huge problem really, because Juno's is, is, is no, it's, it's no Kerbin or Eve <laughs> when it comes to rotational influence. But our lander's quite small. We don't have that much delta V in the lander itself. So if we can save a little bit of fuel by having it so we can uh, reorbit again using the planet's rotation to give us a little extra bit of delta V, then we should take that opportunity. So there we go. But it's it's not a great loss if you don't do it. And the great thing about Juno, um, which actually means that Juno, act ironically somewhat, it, it, it takes less fuel to circularize at Juno than it does for the Mun, I think, because Juno doesn't really take a significantly more, like, higher amount of fuel to reach versus the Mun. And uh, unlike the Mun, we don't need to do any burns to circularize. I mean, I did here, so this is a terrible example. But if you've got your aerobrake just right, <laughs> you can just circularize entirely using Juno's atmosphere. So really, I mean, if you're if you're very frugal and efficient, you can get to Juno for like literally just over a kilometer of delta V, uh, a kilometer per second of delta V. I think it's like 1.1 kilometers per second, although that is with very efficient flying. But there we are. Um, we kind of fast forwarded all the way through that, didn't we? So now we can just we've switched the, to the uh, crash lander and it's time warping to a point where we're passing underneath the rescue ship, and then we can just promptly switch back and prepare for our landing uh, procedure. So this would involve obviously. Um, we can only send one Kerbal down because our lander can has a capacity for only two. And of course we need to have a free seat available for the, uh, the poor Kerbal that's on the surface. So we're just going to send Jeb down because he's the pilot at the end of the day. So we need to send our, our best pilot for such a difficult mission. It's not really that difficult. It's just a, it's just a case of trial and error really. So if I were you, I'd do a quick save at this point and then just experiment doing diff various different sort of periapsis heights or, you know, uh, experimenting where your point of impact appears on the map and just kind of quick loading, quick saving so you can get yourself a nice close approach. There's not really a kind of tried and true, there's not really like a, like, just do this and it will work every time. It's more a case of just, you know, well, I mean, there is, but I would recommend just, you know, keep practicing and you'll just get it. Um, or you could use the trajectories mod. That's another option which actually does accurately predict where you'll end up and it takes into account atmospheric drag and all that. It's particularly popular for people doing Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy recreations, but that's besides the point. So I wanted to just show that you can do it without that mod. It's just, you just practice <laughs> and quick save and quick load and you can just, it's, it's quite easy. I kind of talked about this on my Eve rescue as well, like, cause that's a lot, lot harder to get right. Cause Eve is much bigger than Juno and his atmosphere is much more significant. And there we go. We landed pretty close. Not a uh, bit of a bit of a bounce landing. This thing doesn't. Juno's atmosphere is not quite thick enough for uh, parachute landings alone to uh, be survivable generally. So just a little bit puff of the engine, but I got a bit overzealous and bounced on the surface. But doesn't matter. We survived. And then we could just you know fly the stranded ship over to us. It wasn't that far away. We have a little bit of fuel in there. It just wasn't enough to get into uh, get into orbit. And look at that. We can EVA his Kerbal. And we can go and jeb over, so I'll go and quickly go and meet her. She's, uh, well, I'm sure she's ecstatic. I'm sure she's ecstatic, but uh, not, not much. I haven't really got much in the way of, you know, things planned to say at this point. But there we go. And Jebediah can, of course, do the obligatory Blunderbirds flag plant. Because, you know, you've got to do that. And there's a little shot there. there. <laughs> yeah, like I say, I, I kind of like the fact that these are a bit more sort of a relaxed... Like it's it's you can watch it and kind of figure out how what you're meant to do just by watching what's on screen and it's kind of a passive I like passive tutorial. Let's go with that. It's a passive tutorial. I'm not really going over the exact ins and outs and methodology behind every single maneuver, but I'm hoping just by watching it you can get a feel for, <laughs> for what it is I'm doing. But um, as I mentioned in last week's uh, video, I was I'm going to be doing I'm going to be re rebooting my save file, which means I'll have to unlock the tech tree from scratch. It won't be career mode; it'll just be science mode because. Ain't nobody got time for a career mode playthrough, let's face it. But as I'm unlocking the texture, I'll have to start with basic parts and build from the ground up. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of discuss actual tutorial -y components. So I think one of them, I would definitely like to do a tutorial on building space stations and orbital rendezvous, that sort of thing. I have kind of done that in other videos, just as it happens, like Blunderbirds, I've done a lot of Apollo star missions and I've done uh, kind of 
a video aimed at sort of getting you better at docking by using Minmus, because Minmus is really easy to dock around. But I've never done like a full dedicated tutorial on LKO docking, so I think that would be nice. That would be a nice thing to include. And a sort of detailed uh, MUN landing tutorial as well, though again I, I did do that quite recently, so perhaps not. But I've never done an interplanetary tutorial, and there's a couple I'd like to do. I think one would be kind of your first interplanetary mission, which I would recommend a, a probe to EVE, because EVE is super easy to get to and it's super easy to land on. Obviously taking off is another thing, but if you're just sending a probe it doesn't matter. And then maybe once you've done that, then build up to Juna, Juna returns, that sort of thing. Um, but if, if you guys have any other tutorial ideas, um, maybe not even KSP, um, what else can I... Uh, what else do I know things about? I can so I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Maybe I'll just become a Rubik's Cube tutorial channel. Would you guys like that? <laughs> just in the middle of a Blunderbird episode, we're like, no, I'm going to cut away to, uh, to this part of the tutorial. But yeah, we've circularized, circularized there. Uh, I went with the Aerospike engine. It's probably not really that, it probably wasn't that necessary on Juno, but the Aerospike is good because it's just, it maintains its efficiency throughout atmosphere to vacuum. Uh, I did mention this in a video, I can't remember, uh, in my Aerospike SSTO video. I mentioned the fact that the uh, the aerospike's good because engines in general are calibrated to work optimally at a certain height. So like the vectors and mammoths, they're very much geared to functioning well, like efficiently in thick atmospheres. And things like the nuclear engines, are of course, uh, the nuclear engines and like ion engines, they're very much designed to only really be useful in vacuums. Whereas the aerospike is designed to basically be just as efficient as in an atmosphere as it is in a vacuum. Uh, I did kind of detail exactly why this works. Uh, it uses air pressure to form a virtual bell shape rather than having like a physical engine bell. And it is like a superior way of designing an engine, but they don't really exist in real life because of the cost and their weight. And they haven't really figured it out yet. Although there is a rocket that's currently, it's either been, it either has been built but hasn't flown yet, or they're still building it. But it will use an aerospike. I believe it's called the Firefly, I think. So that's, watch that space. That's going to be quite a cool thing to see. But for now, they only really exist as, you know, prototypes uh, and in KSP. So, <laughs> but there we go. Just doing a little docking without a monopropellant there just to showcase that it's, it's not that hard once you kind of, you know, know what you're doing. <laughs> just get yourself nice and far away. Kill off all your speed. Point yourself towards the target docking port. Then do the same. Switch to the other ship. Target the lander. And then just sort of drift them together nice and slowly. Do bear in mind that this video a lot of the time is played uh, faster than it is. Uh, I sped it up in editing. Just, you know, so it doesn't drag on too much. And so things might look like they're occurring faster than they really were. But there we go. We can just dump that lander because we don't want to leave any junk in someone else's save file. <laughs> so we can just deorbit that. And then we can perform our escape burns. So I kind of raised my uh, orbital height just there using burning radi radial out. It's not the most efficient way of doing it, but I have loads of fuel at this point, so it doesn't matter. And then we can just kind of force a curbing encounter. So I just kind of went for a very rough... Uh, orbit around the sun to begin with, and then we can just do an inclination change that will get us on a Kerbin encounter within kind of one solar orbit. So that's kind of, that's what I'm doing here. So yeah, no, no, didn't really plan any maneuver node just there, and I haven't waited for any transfer windows, but as you can see, just by playing around with retrograde, prograde, um, the anti-normal anti and normal, we can uh, brute force ourselves an encounter, and you know, and like I say, this is kind of going to be a soft tutorial, like you can download this craft file in the description. If you uh, end up not having as much fuel as I have, then it doesn't matter because as I say, we've got excessive fuel. So you could always wait for an actual transfer window from Juno to Kerbin in order to get, you know, save fuel. It really doesn't take that much fuel to get back to Kerbin, especially when you bear in mind that you can air brake. And we have heat shields and things on this thing, so it's it, we can air brake. We, we, will, be, we will be aero braking. Uh, although really we could have probably circularized. Well, we definitely could have circularized. I think I was just being lazy. <laughs> well, I know I was being lazy. Let's face it, that's not something new. That's not a new thing for this channel, is it? Um, but yeah, there's not really a lot for me to talk. I it's always get, I always get it gets really awkward at this point in the commentary because it's it's too late on in the video really for me to start a whole new topic. I can't really start a story time with Matt at this point because the video is nearly finished. Um, but there's nothing really for me to talk about that I haven't already discussed at an earlier point in the video. So I just make tangents like this. And now now we've kind of got to a point where I can start talking about something else. I can get back on track and talk about what's on screen. So we can stage that thing there. So we use the, um, the blue decoupler. It's a stack separator. So it's heavier than the big yellow and black one. But it's much more 
it's 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 nicer to look at it's it's thinner it's not very ugly and very thick so that's why i kind of went with this one and you know this thing already had excessive weight anyway we had that crew module down there that we never actually used it was just there to kind of make this a bit more realistic because in reality we wouldn't just be stuffing our kerbals inside that mark uh, the apollo style command pod for the entire duration with no other places to move around so we had that thing just to sort of represent a habitation module maybe it had like some stasis chambers in it who knows it's up to you really <laughs> um but yeah Dude, we kind of had to do two aero brakes. One, we didn't quite get our apoapsis uh, kind of below the Kármán line, but it was circularized, so we kind of just swooped around and then hit the atmosphere once again, and that did slow us down. Look at that. Used up all the ablator. I'm pretty sure they've kind of nerfed ablator, because before you barely, you only needed like a tiny percentage of how much like the ablative shields had by default. But it seems now that it, it does get worn down a bit more realistically, so... Maybe I should start, you know, <laughs> launching my ships with full ablator rather than just reducing it by about half. But we seem to have survived, uh, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the screen. And of course, this is a... I think this is 100... I didn't actually check if this guy plays in 100... I mean, when I was landing my booster, two of the air brakes did get destroyed. So I'm assuming this is 100% re-entry heating. Uh, and I can tell you right now, for a fact, this would work <laughs> at 100% re-entry heating. Because I tested this crap on my own save file before I got my hands on the current save file. But I don't actually know. But regardless, like I say, this should work, hopefully. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. We've splashed down. There's nothing else for me to say, really, except for what's on screen. Top left is the music video version for this video, if you want to check that out. Uh, top right is the full Blunderbirds playlist. Bottom left is just my most recent upload. And the bottom right was specially chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. So other than that, uh, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord. And if you want to, you can support me on Patreon. All the links are in the description. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.